Our first reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 56, verses 1, and then continuing on with 6, 7, and 8. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, anyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him beside those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our gospel reading today comes to us from Matthew chapter 15, beginning verse 21. So Jesus went away from there and withdrew to a district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered that I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. That she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Behold! Now, when's the last time you've said, behold? Now, I'm probably guessing most of you are thinking, Pastor, I have never said, behold. <laughs> so maybe you've heard it in something of Shakespeare, or maybe you've heard it somewhere in like a King James Bible. <laughs> but that word, behold, is still there in our text today. That you might not like it, but Matthew Matthew loved that word. Matthew used that word 40 times in his gospel. That Matthew was constantly wanting you to look, to see, to pay attention to what is now about to happen. There is no phoning it in. There is no just kind of nodding along that there is no, yes, honey, uh uh-huh, dear, Mm mm-hmm, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, uh uh-huh. Not that anyone here has ever done that. But Matthew today, like in so many other places, says that very word of behold. Focus your attention, put your place, focus your eyes upon what is now about to happen. Come and see what God is doing. Because today, Today, the most unexpected person comes from the most unexpected place saying the most unexpected things. That if I can go ahead and just begin to put a little bit of context to this, of just how unexpected this person to come and be is, let's relate it to kind of an experience of today. So football season's starting in a couple of weeks or so. I know it's preseason, but who really cares? Is that football is going to be happening? So let's just go ahead and imagine. Imagine it's opening day. There on opening day, decked in nothing but that wonderful Bears gear. Is that perfect Chicago Bears super fan ready to start the year off? And right there in the middle of things, he finds himself in Lambeau Field in Green Bay and yells, Go Packers! It feels icky, yes, even saying it, doesn't it? (laughs) As a Chicago Bears fan, it does feel quite wrong. But you would probably see something wrong with that, right? 
These things just don't match. They just don't go. They just don't seem to fit. And yet today, Matthew says, behold, look, focus. See this woman who now comes. That we might think, what's the big deal? Somebody's always coming to Jesus, wanting this, needing that, coming for this, hearing this, is that there is always somebody there. But Matthew says, here comes this Canaanite woman. There is nobody at that time that's being called a Canaanite, just to let you know. <laughs> Matthew uses this very word that identifies her as someone who has come down through the years from Israel's arch enemies. That for the last thousand or fifteen hundred years, these are the very people that the Israelites have been constantly in conflict with, constantly at violent battle with, that these were those who came and brought nothing but pain and suffering and issue and problems in the midst of the lives of those of Jesus' people. These were people that just didn't fit together. And yet, what does she come and do? This woman who comes across every border, every boundary, every wall, and every obstacle that now stands in her way, that she now comes says these very words that have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. She says all the right things. She hits all the right notes. That she calls and ascribes to Jesus this Lord. She comes and says to him that you are the son of David, the king of Israel. You are the one who has come down from these people that we have long hated, but today, today I come in confession of you, today I come in hope that you might grant me this need. For her daughter was in a desperate place, in a desperate position, that this does not simply tell of just how far a mother would go but it tells of that very place where she now finds herself standing in the most unexpected of places before the most unexpected people. And now she presents her best request, her best need, that, Lord, won't you help me? And what is Jesus' response? Silence. silence. Now what happened to all of the other occasions, all of the other times where Jesus, moved by compassion, now helps, now heals, now teaches, now forgives, now whatever it is, how many times have we seen this before? But now comes silence. How many prayers have you prayed How many requests have you brought? How many moments in your life have you found yourself in a moment where you needed to hear that assurance or needed something? You found yourself praying and you felt that question. Why is it so quiet? Why does it seem that the Lord has not heard? Why does it seem that my prayer goes unanswered? That where is God in the midst of this? See, here is Jesus, once again having left everything behind of all of the bickering, all of the squabbling, all of the fighting that was back there in Israel, all of the things of people who were questioning him and challenging him and doubting him, that he was simply trying to get away. But still she pursues. 
Still she follows, still she chases after, still she cries out and yells and screams, Son of David, have mercy. That Jesus was trying to get away from her, but she would not let him. And it's one of those things that what do we see here? We see something so strange of Jesus not giving any response, anything there, but this woman who doesn't give up. That how many prayers have you given up on? Or how many prayers have you given that very fact of that greatest need and you come to God, but then you seek solace and consolation in something else? food, drink, this or that. One little thing to make me feel better here or one little thing that makes me feel better there. Is that we come and then we leave. That what does this woman do? I'll tell you what she does. She is so persistent so direct, so clear that is there, that how do the disciples respond? Now, I know what you think. Man, those are some of the most compassionate men that there are around, right? They've just always got their stuff together. And today they show it yet again. Then what do they respond to this? Jesus, send her away! (laughs) We don't care if you heal her daughter or not, just send her away. Now that's an interpretation, but what did they say? Send her away for she keeps calling out after us. They are done. They are checked out. They are just ready for her to be someplace else. And yet she comes. Yes, she's tried saying the right thing in the right way in the right place. She's tried all the flowery language and making sure that it sounds good and right. Too many of us think that our prayers need to be said rightly. They need to say the right things in the right ways in the right places. They need to have that flourish and sound like ancient King James Version English or something, but otherwise they just won't be heard, or certainly we don't want to say it in front of others. But what does she come with? She comes with simple and honest and a persistent prayer. Even with these guys who are now saying, send her away. Talk about a welcoming church, right? According to them, she was from the wrong side of the track, had the wrong history, had the wrong past, had the wrong problems, had the wrong issues, the wrong look. She won't fit in. Do we have some of those same problems? Do we feel that people have to look a certain way and pray a certain way and behave a certain way before they are welcomed in? Do we think that we have to pray a certain way and say the proper thing, otherwise we won't be heard? Then what is Jesus doing here? That it is not time For him to now go and to spread his word to those outside of Israel. It is not time in his ministry for it to go forward. It is not time. It is not the time nor the place nor the situation for that gospel and that good news to proceed forth from here. As he says that I was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. That it is not right to give the food of the children to those that are just begging at the table. 
But how does that woman respond? With the most beautiful words that we can hear. Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, but. And I'm pretty convinced that day that Jesus had the biggest smile come across his face. For our God loves, loves to hear the very promises that he has given us rubbed in his ears. That even the very silence of Jesus made this woman bolder still. Even the very compassion of Jesus, though it is not time or place for this very gift of His grace to come forth to these people out there in these kinds of places, is that even though it is not time for that step in the mission, Christ can't help Himself. That He shows compassion, He shows care, He begins to work in a place that He was just trying to get away trying to hide, trying to lay low, and this woman would not let him. She asks for but a crumb, just a little bite. And what does it say happens right after our reading for today? But not just one who is so far off, so distant, so far. A woman who had no reason being there, have a people that had no place there, had no claim, no reality, that she asked for but a crumb. And now in the very next account, what do we have? 4,000 plus of her closest friends, family, and countrymen. And they are invited to have a seat at the table. Jesus did not just feed the 5,000 plus Jewish people, but he went to the other side of the sea, to the wrong side of the tracks, to those who were far off and far removed, and he invited them to the table, just like he did to you, that today he invites you and welcomes you to the table that he has set, of forgiveness and grace, of mercy and peace. It does not matter how often you have strayed. It does not matter how far you have gone. It does not matter how many borders or boundaries or walls stand in the way. Christ has come. His forgiveness has been won. That he invites you now to him. That it doesn't matter how many times that we feel that silence. It doesn't matter how many times that there are those moments that he invites us to bring our simple, our honest, and our persistent prayers to him. For he desires to make more of that faith, to grow that faith. To call forth, not only in that woman's life, but in all of our lives, a stronger faith that calls upon him still, that says, yeah, but. Lord, you have promised, and so now I ask, that may your will be done among us. May your forgiveness come still. May you be the one who works in our lives all of the victory that you have won for us on that cross. And may that peace of God that surpasses all understanding, may it guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.